doing a little bit of HSL action tonight again. Uh, hopefully we're going to get a game in. I did get a message from the opposing team, so it should work out just fine for us. Um, yeah, we are... Okay. Uh, so yeah, we're going to try to get everything sorted out with the... Um, with the uh, stream first before we get anything else going. Um, but I am CFP698, Connor Bagel, here doing the casting for the Hunaniga High School eSports team. Uh, we're going to be playing Cinco Ranch High School of Texas um, in the week four of the High School Star League spring split. Really, uh, it's gone pretty fast through these first three weeks, and uh, Hananiga has one of each type of ending. They have a loss, a win, and a tie. Uh, that win coming off of a forfeit last week. Um, we were really looking forward to seeing uh, a nice game uh, out of last week, but um, we did get a forfeit victory out of it, so this week we're going to look to come back and have a good game out of this one. Well, now you can't see me. Let's put this behind there. Let's enlarge that a little bit. Put that over there. All right. So, we've got Hananiga and Cinco Ranch. Um, this week, we're going to have a little bit of an issue. We did talk about trying to have stability last week. And as soon as we say that, everything came crashing down on us this week. We have our starting top laner. Uh, Fluffy1337, uh, Alex Biondi, is not going to be able to be on for at least the first game. He's having some internet issues over at his home. Uh, so we're going to be playing with one of our subs in for the game. Uh, we're going to have Trevor Griffiths, a.k.a. Brad Kristoff. My usual casting partner is going to get a call up for today's game. And he's going to be playing in the jungle as we do shuffle around the positions for that one. So... We're going to see Trevor in the jungle. You're going to see, uh, let me just double check my team comp real quick, make sure I know what's going on with everything here. Looks like we're going to have Anthony Rowe, a.k.a. HHS Gucci. He's going to be up in the top lane. Uh, James Dean, Games Dean, is going to be in his usual position of mid. Ethan Etar Schubert's going to be at the ADC position. And Calvin IMC. Cox is going to come down to the support position. Uh, that's going to be how they line up for us tonight on the Hananiga side and on the uh, on the Cinco Ranch side. It looks like it's going to be Prodigy Kane at the ADC position. DC rules 821 in the uh, top lane. Raznak at the support position. Ramus de Turtle in the jungle and we're going to see Firestar 9003 as your mid laner. Uh, so two of their higher rated players up in the top lane and down at the mid lane. Um, what I have noticed going through some of their team comps is this team tends to play a lot and I mean a lot of Caitlyn at the ADC, so that might be a ban-worthy champion for them there. And uh, based on the fact that the cha that the uh, summoner's name is Ramus de Turtle, uh, I expect to see, uh, and also based on his prior games played, I expect to see more of a something like a Ramus or a Vi. I've seen a couple of games of Trundle come out of Ramus, but not too much. He does have good record, but then again, they were playing against a team with a Jin last week in both games, and Jin does have the lowest winning percentage in the entire game right now. Um, so, he's one that it'll be interesting to see. Looks like they got a couple of games with Poppy in last week. Uh, Poppy top lane looks to be one of his strong suits. Um, both games, he posted a combined over the two games, um, wins and losses, or, sorry, kills and assists over deaths, 7 plus 14 plus 17, so 21 
uh, 41 over 1, or 48 over 1. So DC Rules was rocking that 48 KDA last week. Um, so that'll be one to look out for uh, this week. Um, over on the Hananiga side, we did go over most of the uh, most of the champs last week for them. Um, but now that we're seeing Anthony in the top lane, I'd like to see what he might bring out there. Um, and we're going to see a new, most likely a new champ for uh, Trevor out in the jungle. I, I want to know what he's going to be playing. Um, but this is going to be a, an interesting game with that learning curve. Um, just getting that that first taste of the HSL stage is going to be a little bit... Um, it's going to be a little bit of pressure for Trevor, but I'm sure he can work up to that pressure and uh, be sure that he can succeed. We're looking at uh, three more minutes left before we jump on over into uh, the queue for this game. Um, so I, I think we're just going to do a little bit of what's strong right now, what might be uh, some probable team comps, and I think right now... Uh, based on just having a little bit of a mismatch, mishmash team for Hananiga, uh, we're going to look at seeing if we can get Etar and uh, Gamesteen to carry out of this game. Um, probably the strongest ones to carry out of it. Um, let's see. Haha. <laughs> I see a little bit. I see that uh, one of my friends, we're going to give a shout out over to the Lutheran High School, Rockford Lutheran High School team, they, uh, they've got a little bit of a viewing party going on for us, so, uh, thanks guys for watching, um, and also I've got some of the, uh, Hananiga team is going to be watching us as well as they're playing, so, uh, with that, I think we've got two minutes left before the game is going to, uh, start, so, looks like I'm going to try to hop on over into the uh, over into the queue and see if it'll help if we can get on in there or if anybody else is in there as well. Nope, not shift V, control V. That is a valid game. And it looks like, yeah, they're all here. Um, we're just waiting on our team. So let's just double check. Yeah, uh, so going through... Looks like DC is Silver 3 this uh, season. Ramus is Silver 5. Uh, Prodigy Kane is also Silver 5. Raznok is unranked this season. And looks like their captain, Firestar9003, is Gold 1 this season. Um, So it looks like they're gonna they're gonna be ready. Yep, there's there's James and E and all of them. All right, so we've got everybody here except we're waiting on Cal. Um, yeah, if you notice, I don't understand why it always does this to me. There's Cal. So we're uh, looks like we're all here. The gang's all here. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't show. The icons right once we go into custom games but it always seems to do this for us so looks like we're going to be ready to jump on over to champion select and uh, there we go I'm gonna say GLHF and let's let's see Okay, so looks like we are all good to uh, get this game. And yeah, so we've got E is also is gold. Division 4 was plat last season, just like Firestar. Um, Anthony was silver fi is silver 5, was silver last season. Kale silver this year, silver last season. 
James gold last season, silver this season, or maybe high silver. And uh, this is Trevor's first year playing ranked. So it'll be interesting to see how this game goes. And looks like they're getting ready starting in 10 seconds. And uh, looks like James has been ready his entire life. And yes, we are into champion select. So looks like it's going to be on the blue side. We're going to have Cinco Ranch to start off. Uh, Zed's going to be the first band to come out from there. Uh, Zed's going to be the first band, and Vi is going to come out for as the band for the Hananiga team. Lucian's going to come out from the Cinco Ranch team, and uh, it looks like these may be targeted bands towards Ramus just to see if they can put him off of his favorited champions. Um, second band coming out from Hananiga. Uh, we might see a Ramus here, um, but no, it's going to be a Poppy to try to keep that away from the... DC Rules 821 uh, team comp. And Dr. Mundo, just for the strong pick, is going to come out as the ban from Cinco Ranch. And it looks like I'm wondering if maybe the Caitlyn will be the last ban out from uh, Hananiga here. No, it's going to be a Tom Kench. They just don't want to face that. So first pick is going to come over onto the Cinco Ranch side. What do they want to do today? Looks like they're going to mouse over and wait some more. They're not going to mouse over anything. Um, the Ezreal mouse over would be an interesting pickup for the mid laner. Um, most likely that would be where it would be going. Could also go ADC, but I don't really see that as an ADC pick this game. And it is going to be picked up for Cinco Ranch, so... Uh, we're going to see James and E pick up for the Hananiga team. Uh, 45 seconds left to pick. Uh, probably going to pick up some strong champs, though. I don't know where they're going to... They're going to pick up the priority picks, and Ilawi is going to be that pick uh, for... Going to probably trade that one up into the top lane. And Corky's going to come out, so very strong carry there. Heavy mid-game um, from the Corky. I'm wondering... It's just going to be a mouse over now. Looks like they're going to pick up the Thresh instead for Cal. Just to make sure that one's available. Um, and I think that Alawi's probably going to go over to Gucci just to make sure that that's up there. So looks like the Lulu's going to go over to the blue side. Um, another strong pickup there by Cinco Ranch. Uh, probably going to go mid lane. Could be a support, but that would probably rotate Ezreal down to the ADC position. Gragas as a possible jungler or support. Um, this team cop's starting to, with the mouse overs here, it's a little bit disorienting where this might go. I'm a little bit surprised at some of these champs. Um, Gragas truly isn't, he was a little better last season, um, really didn't mesh into this season as well as he could have. But, um, it looks like they're going to let time expire on that one, and it is going to be the Gragas pickup there for Ramus. Um, so now over to Trevor. He's going to pick up his Zack Jungle, one of his comfort picks there. And the Ari is going to come out for Games Dean James. Another carry there for, the, uh, for who we were trying to kind of funnel that into. And it looks like the Yasuo is going to come out, so... Maybe a Lulu rotating up to the top. Oh, yes, that would be where it would be going. So Lulu is going to rotate up to the top lane. Um, it's going to flex in there. Uh, strong Alawi counter in Lulu. Uh, Ezreal is going to be played as the ADC based on this current comp. Yasuo in the mid lane. Gragas is going to be the jungle. Not really quite in meta, but we'll see how that goes. And Morgana is going to be a carry support there for them. So they've got a lot of AP to this team in the Lulu and Gragas, and Morgana. Um, we're also going to see a little bit of AD from the Yasuo and the Ezreal, but I don't see as much of a tankiness to this team as they might like. Uh, that's something that's going to be picked up by the Zac and the Thresh, and most likely, or for sure, the Alawi on uh, Hananiga. So we've got a little bit more of a late-game-oriented team over there on the Hananiga side. 
Um, looks like Cinco Ranch may just want to steamroll this game, and so we'll see how this one goes early game. That may decide the entire game for them. Instead of an ADC, it looks like we're going to have a mouse over of a ribbon. Um, you know, just why not cheese the opponents a little bit and throw out a ribbon there? I, If this is played, I will personally quit the team. And yes, so there goes the Draven. It's going to be the um, Draven coming out for Etar. Uh, a little bit of an interesting pick. Not quite the meta pick that he's been looking for, but very strong carry with a very good laning phase. Um, most likely picked up to counter the Ezreal. Um, and a, also a comfort pick for their, uh, there for Etar. So while we wait to get out onto the rift, we're going to uh, ask you, send out in the Twitch comments any of your votes on who you think is going to win this game. Uh, it's either going to be you're going to have to ask, is it going to be Cinco Ranch winning game one of the two, or is it going to be Hananiga taking the game one? Uh, looks like a strong uh, team comp for both teams, more of a poke comp coming out from the uh, blue side, and more of a fight comp coming out from the uh, red side there, or purple side as it's labeled up there. So we're waiting the three minutes, and while we wait, I think I'm going to send it back over to the music for just a little bit to get us uh, waiting as I take a short break. Everybody, it's time to get back into the game. We're going to launch right now for this first game of two tonight for Hananiga versus Senka Ranch High School. It's going to be Hananiga on the red side for this first one with uh, Senka Ranch on the blue side for the first game. Again, those team comps are going to be the 
Uh, for for Senko Ranch, it's going to be up in the top lane, a Lulu in the mid lane. It's going to be a uh, Yasuo, ADC Ezreal, Superfan Gragas is going to be the jungle, and a Morgana is going to be the support. The support. For Hananiga, it's going to be uh, Games Dean as the uh, mid laner, and Ari, Draven ADC, Zach Jungle, Lowey top lane, and Thresh support. We're going to load on into the game, and it looks like we, sounds like at least, we are ready to proceed. Um, for some reason my screen doesn't want to show that way. There it is. All right. Wonderful. Let's just make sure you can see that real quick. Yep, you guys can. All right, switching back into the into the game. There, I'm gonna get a black screen. Oh, bug splat instead. Hmm. All right, let's not send in. Let's reconnect real quick. We'll load quickly back in. Uh, so you guys are gonna miss the first opening of uh, where they're going to go out into the positions. Um, I know Hananiga had been talking a little bit of a lane swap. Um, it's been suggested. I don't know that it really was thoroughly considered as an option for this game. Um, there we go. We're back. Looks like we're going to see five men sitting in the mid lane bush for the invade here into the jungle. Uh, looks like the blue steel is going to come in here for uh, Senka Ranch, and it looks like they are going to find themselves a Thresh, or Thresh is going to find himself some players. Going to get a couple of wards traded out there. He'll be able to see that all three of them did come out through there, so they are going to be able to ping out where all of them are. Um, let's real quick check the Fog of Wars for the teams. Let's see, so let's go back and let's make sure that they saw that. Where they were here. Let's go back real quick. Yeah, red team did see everybody there. So back to live. Okay, so back down to bot lane. I'm gonna go back to the fog of war for everybody real quick. Looks like it's gonna look at Draven real quick. Mid lane's gonna see relatively even CS. Actually, it's gonna be a little bit of a CS lead there for Hananiga. A little bit of a poke on to the Illawi there from Lulu. Uh, bot lane is gonna get pushed. All lanes are actually gonna get pushed towards the Cinco Ranch uh, turrets, though it looks like they're gonna attempt to freeze bot lane. Looks like that is going to be the case. Gold relative, gold even as you would expect at this point. Looks like Ari is going to get a little bit of poke onto the Asuo, though it is going to get traded back. Back actually better trade there for the Yasuo than the Ari. Gonna get the charm coming out and the flash is going to come out, but it is going to be first blood onto the Yasuo from the Ari. So that's not going to be what Hananiga wanted out of that match. Um, that was one of the lanes they were hoping to really carry. And now we're going to see that that wasn't quite the case. Traditional starts from both junglers. Um, though we are looking to see an early gank from the... From Gragas here. He's going to hold in that bot lane tribush. He is just going to hold there. Looks like he's going to come in. I think red team does see him with the ward. So they're going to back off. They are going to catch a Thresh though. And he is going to go down for that kill. So now it's going to be 2-0 Senko Ranch. And it's only 4 minutes in. This is not looking good for Hananiga. Uh, quite frankly, this is not... I, I think this could be the snowball that... Uh, Sango Ranch was looking to put on. Draven is going to just continue to farm on Eat, or Eatar is going to continue to farm on Draven. Um, 
all lanes are actually being won in CS by by Senka Ranch. Uh, jungle does have a little bit more clear by uh, Hananiga, but the unfortunate part is there that you have a little bit more clear for, or you have an assist on the Gragas. Gonna see an early counter gank there, but it's not really gonna turn into much. Um, looks like Draven is gonna catch those axes, get a couple of them spinning. Top lane relatively even. Get a little bit of a better trade there for Hananiga. And here's a second fight mid lane. Is it gonna turn into the next? No, it's not, okay. There's a 7.7 to 6.2 thousand gold lead already for Sanko Ranch. Uh, not quite what they were hoping for, Hananiga. And here comes the gank from Ramp or from Gragas. It is going to come out, and there's going to be another kill for Yasuo. Now 2 and 0 in the mid lane, and this lane is just going down hard for Hananiga. Um, not much to say there. It just... Gamestein walked back into the fight. I think he probably could have escaped had he not walked back when he saw the Gragas, but I think just instinctually said, okay, gonna fight that, and um, he ended up paying for it. Looks like Gucci's just gonna try to freeze the lane at midpoint. And now that gold lead is up to 9,000. It's about a 2,000 gold lead for Han or for uh, Sinker Wrench now. Luckily, no towers taken, but it is a CS lead there as well in the bot lane, the mid lane, and the top lane. Looks like the full combo is going to come out from the Ari, and it's just not going to do much against the Yasuo. It is a strong counter pick there. Gucci is going to get the soul, but it's not going to do much once that's out. Um, he's going to take a lot more trade back as this Lulu progresses. It's just going to be a tougher and tougher matchup for him to work out there. Looks like he is going to back and try to just see what he can do here. Ari is going to get a good trade for once here. Looks like Yasuo just wants to come back out. The shield is going to come back out. And here comes the Tempest, or the Tornado. It is going to go down. Um, Gragas, I believe, was seen there. There's a ward in the bush. We'll go back and check that if we need to. And it looks like we're going to see Zach rotating up top to try to hold this tower. Um, see if he can get a gank on. Lulu is going to take a tower shot, not something that she really wanted to do there. And the wind wall is going to come out from Yasuo, so nothing there that R can do. Simply wants to take some farm. All the lanes have kind of calmed down a little more. Uh, they're just kind of farming, waiting to get six. Gragas is looking for another gank onto the mid lane. As top lane is gone, uh, looks like Lulu did back pick up an item. Uh, she picked up the catalyst of the protector to pick uh, to have a little bit more health and mana for these long in, uh, sustained trades. And it looks like the counter gank is going to come out, and it's going to separate the two players from Kananiga. And it looks like it might be a double kill here. They're going to pick up one. Yeah, they're going to pick up one out of it, and it looks like now Gucci is going to rotate down and attempt to get something out of here. But not much can be done as Lulu is going to follow with them. So it's now 4-0 for uh, Cinco Ranch, only 8.5 minutes into the game. And we are going to see the level 6, or sorry, level 5 champion mastery come out from the Lulu, or the SO, one of the two, couldn't tell. They're going to just aggro this turret a little bit. She's going to take a turret shot. Looks like she's... Looks like the... Ari ultimate is going to be cost there, and it looks like there is going to be 
a flash burn from Yasuo, but he is going to pick up the kill. Now 5-0 from, from Senko Ranch, and not much they can do there. It looks like, oh, they are going to try to catch out a Yasuo, but it's going to be a 2v5, and not much they can do there. They're simply going to see it, the Draven go down. It's now 6-0. Senko Ranch, and it looks like they're going to rotate on and maybe pick up this dragon. No, they're going to try to defend top lane with the Lulu. Looks like they're going to three-man the dragon, and it will work out for them just fine. Not much Hanani can do there to contest. So, dragon number one on to Senko Ranch. 6-0 on this game. Alrighty. And this is just what you get when you have those true counters, like Analawi and Ari both getting hard countered here. Uh, Alawi is going to try to take out the pink ward, but is going to get uh, Glitter Lanced away. She will get the pink ward out, but looks like... Will the soul be taken? No. They're going to have to keep that. And just the trade is going to come back. Are they going to pick up any? No. The... Zack is going to miss his skill shots, and the traits are going to come back and are going to win for Yasuo yet again. But this may be it. There's a, there's a, there's a knight on to the Yasuo, and Zack is going to pick up the first kill for Hananiga, so the perfect game is over from Senko Ranch. They are going to get the shutdown gold from Yasuo there. There's a good gank onto the mid lane, uh, and it looks like they may try to push that tower uh, but it looks like Ilawi is going to get kind of enclosed by a two-man gank. The flash is going to come out, but re-engaged by, by Gragas, and it is going to be a kill there. On to, looks like Lulu is going to pick up that kill. It's going to move her to 102, Yasuo 312, Gragas 104, Ezreal 102, and Morgana 101. For Hananiga, we have the Alawi at 1010, uh, Zach 110, Ari is going to be sitting at 03 and 1, and now may go down again. Nope, going to be able to out survive that one. Trade back in there. You're going to see a little bit of a trade going down bot lane. Bot lane may be finding their rhythm here. But the Rift Herald is going to go over to the blue side. It is going to go on. The buff is going to go on to the Lulu. The Empowered Recall is going to come out. They're going to get... Ooh. The ulti is going to come out, and it's going to be a kill onto the Draven. Are they going to pick up two here? There's a possibility here for a second. They're going to try for the double on to Draven. And Draven is going to pick up that double kill. And they're going to make sure they aggro this right and they are both going to be able to survive so bot lane picks up a double kill for draven etar on draven and it's going to be relatively back to the gold lead is going to be cut down to 3000 now without the ability to use uh without the rift herald it is going to be a little bit hard to take this tower uh, so it looks like Alawi is going to back off. Anthony on Alawi. Um, Zach continues to farm. Mid lane looks like there might be a gank being set up as Gregus is sitting in his bot jungle. It looks like uh, bot lane for Hanarika did back off and just wait for this one to, as the mid lane turret did go down. So he's going to have to play a lot more careful out of this one. Yeah, Gregus is going to try to rotate around in the side lane here. Yep. And that's something that he's escaped the wards of Hananiga. The ulti is going to miss from Gragas. And so it's going to stay safe up on both the top lane and the mid lane for both teams. Looks like Kale is going to try to clear a ward out there, as is the Gragas. Relatively even here. 
I did get glitter lanced up there, allow we did. And it looks like Anthony is gonna Oh. Yep, yep. And it looks like he's gonna have to back away from this one. Are they gonna be able to 2v1 here? DC rules is looking for Zach here. He's got he's gonna cancel his recall. Are they gonna be able to Ooh? The jump away there. And the ulti's gonna have to come out, but Yasuo is missing. He's gonna try to pick up this kill, and he is gonna get the kill from uh, from the top lane, Alawi there. He moves himself to 4, 1, and 2. As I was saying, he's gonna be their big carry of this game, as I was saying earlier today. Yeah, Gragas is gonna come out, but both ults are gonna, or both of the flashes are gonna come out from Hananiga. They're gonna save themselves there. So flashes are down. Good gank there from. Uh, Sango Ranch to pick up that, and top lane turret is going to go down for Hananiga. Looks like they are going to get the pickoff on Morgana. Ooh, and it looks like Itar is going to pick that up. Are we going to see two? No, Gragas is going to rotate himself back down. They see him, so they're going to back out of it. He's going to try for the ulti to separate them out, but it's not going to help much. They are going to get... are they going to get the hookah back out? No. They decide that it's not worth it, and so they're going to back out of that one. Le no mana left on the Draven, so, or the Thresh. Looks like they're just going to try to siege down this tower. The TP is going to come down, so they're going to have to back off of this tower. And it looks like that means the Alawi is going to hard push the top turret to see if they can pick that one off too. The flash is going to come out from Gragas, and it's going to be one for nothing right now. Looks like they're going to try to trade it back on. And it looks like Sanko Ranch just disengages, so now 8 5. Hanani get only down by 3 kills at this point. And they are going to take the turret, so it's going to be now only a 2,000 gold deficit for Hananiga. They're slowly crawling their way back into this game. I think the Ari mistakes that... Oh no, she has vision on it, so she knows there's four men down here. She's gonna try to back out here. And it looks like Alawi may steal the blue buff over on the blue side. And it looks like she will be able to do so. Dragon number two may be on the way for Cinco Ranch, though their jungler is up in his top side jungle. Uh, Hananiga is going to try to see if they can set this one up and maybe pick it up. Zack is going to back and uh, make sure he heals up for that dragon take. They do know it's warded. Senko Ranch does see that Rush came through there, as well as Draven. They see that there's three men bot, and they're going to try to even out that turret. Uh, looks like we're going to see Gragas trying to take a second Rift Herald here. And what we were saying earlier, we wanted the Hanania wanted that Draven carry, and it looks like they may be able to get that. Uh, he's trying to even it out with Yasuo, and uh, that's just the two main high-level champs, high-level summoners that are going to be those two for uh, both teams. The Rift Herald is going to come out, but it is a nice play there from Thresh. It's going to come out with the ulti from Draven, and the heal is going to have to be popped from Ezreal there to keep himself from dying for a second time. Looks like they're going to try to push this tower. No, they're going to rotate off. We're going to see that the Ezreal ultimate did just come out. They're going to back up and maybe try to get this wave right at the center of the lane. Looks like that is going to be the case. They're going to try to keep it at the mid lane, but it looks like there was a two-man or two kills coming out. Double for Yasuo, possibly. And no, Gragas is going to pick up the second. We did miss that one based on the directed camera wanting to show us uh, mid lane, or bot lane for some reason. And again, we're going to see a top lane fight that you guys aren't going to see. Now, it looks like we may see it a little bit coming out from the loud here. There has a pause as Ramus has disconnected. Specifying a reason. He got bug splatted, it looks like, so we're going to take this time. 
recap where we are. We are sitting at. Has Gragas has reconnected. We're sitting at enough gold on uh, the Yasuo for about half an item. Not much more for Hananiga. Um, five one and three on the Yasuo. Two one four on the Gragas, and it looks like they did come out of the pause there. Good use of the pause. Well, he's gonna heal off of that. She's gonna miss the W there. But it looks like Draven wants a fight here. The spooky ghosts are gonna come out, and so that's just gonna mean Alawi's just gonna back away from that. Does see that there's now a Gragas coming on, but there is gonna be a Zack that is gonna be prepping to attack, and he's just gonna hold that tower. Looks like, ooh, the hook was out there, but it did miss. 10 5 for Cinco Ranch right now, 20 minutes into the game. 4,000 gold lead, not too substantial, but uh, they are up a bit, a tower, they're up a tower and a dragon, bearing up at 20 seconds. I don't think anybody's going to be willing to take that quite yet. Uh, waiting to see if the second dragon might be contested for Hananiga, uh, or for Senko Ranch, I should say, or if Hananiga's going to take there first. Uh, the buffs did get changed for dragon as of this patch, so that might be a I'm surprised to see that isn't really an objective that the teams are looking to take quite yet. Spooky Ghost out from Morgana. They're going to look to find something here. And it looks like uh, Senko Ranch is going to rotate down onto that dragon. Um, they're going to get, they're going to clear out the vision around it. It looks like they've got five men on the dragon. So they are going to take dragon number two, which gives them the burn on the towers. So that's two dragons out for Hananiga. Or for Senko Ranch. 2-0. Oh, the ulti is going to come out from Gragas, but the flash onto the lantern is going to come back. And that's going to save Draven. A very good lantern there from Thresh, as the five-man gank onto the bot lane does come out. Looks like Alawi's just going to try to hard push and counter that gank. Doing what a good Alawi should. Zack and Ari are going to come out, but they do see that with the vision, and so they're going to be able to get the the uh, CC out onto them. It's going to be a 3v2 bot lane, or 3v4 bot lane. But the Yasu is going to pick up a lot with his ulti, and the and Ari is going to be able to trade back onto that, which is going to bring kill out for Ari 10-6 for Senko Ranch. So not as much of a lead as you would expect at this point in the game. Hananiga starting to scale back into the late game like they were hoping they would. Looks like Ramus is going to come out with his Q. He's going to have a W out too. He's going to try to pick up the Alawi. And Alawi's going to heal. He's going to miss his Q, so Aniga, so Alawi's just going to back off there. Looks like they did get a bit of damage out onto that turret down top lane. Actually, about half of its health is gone, so uh, look. At, I'm looking for Aniga to maybe come and uh, try to take this mid lane tower rotate onto that or they have been very well focusing on the bot lane turret trying to get four man and five man ganks onto it to uh, take that down i think they're going to look to take it right now with the wave pushing in and draven and thresh both there looks like they will be successful in doing so right there draven does take out the turret they're going to be able to clear the wave and or they're going to leave the wave and move it out there. Grekus is rotating down onto them. Uh, I want to see if they might want to fight this one. They're going to back out of it. There's a failed gank up top by uh, Zack. And so now that they've seen Gragas in the river, Games wants to attempt something here in the mid lane. Yasuo yeah, so is just going to have to back off. He's going to land the charm, but it is going to be a big combo out there from Lulu and Yasuo. They're going to look to pick up Draven next, and the Yasuo ultimate is going to be able to take them. And now they're going to rotate on to the Thresh for now what would be the third kill of this one. He's going to get Glitter Lanced, and he's going to get killed. What seemed to be a hook through... I don't know how that quite worked, but um, I don't know if that's a bug or what we'll see, but it does look like bot lane turrets are going to be equalized. 
Illawi's going to be pushing this bot tur or this top turret, but she is going to have the Gregus come onto her. The second tier mid lane turret is going to go down. Now they're going to try to take the inhibitor turret and the inhibitor. That one, I don't think they can defend this on Niga, and it's going to be Game Steam getting caught out for his efforts. Not much we can see here. We're going to see another kill come out onto Etar, and it looks like they're going to attempt to pick up the Zac as well. Just, they lost that one trade, and now all of their base is going down. They're going to lose an inhibitor out of it as well. It's going to be 3v2. They're going to lose another turret down in the bot lane as Ezreal continues to split push, and everything is going down for Hananiga right now. It's now a 10,000 gold lead simply off of that one fight, and now they're going to try to take a second inhibitor turret that I don't think Hananiga can defend. They can also pick up the inhibitor off of this, it looks like. Hananiga can't defend that as well. There's going to be two inhibitors and four turrets off of one fight here. Not what Hananiga wanted to see. There's going to come out the flash from Halawi. They're going to try to re-engage on this one, but the Yasuo is going to disengage with his uh, with his tornado. They're going to pick up one, though, off of the Halawi. going to try to pick up a second one with Ezreal. He's going to be able to jump out of there. Yasuo's going to come out. He's going to try to pick up one with his ulti. Is Zack going to pick up any here? going to look to slow him down. He does get the slow out. And he's not going to be able to pick up any, but Draven is going to come back. He's going to try to pick up something for his efforts. Ezreal is going to be... Draven's going to go down to Ezreal, but they are going to pick up the Asuo now. It looks like Halawi may be able to pick up something. Uh, she's going to have to back out there as they get the Gragas and the Morgana ult. He's going to come out, and now it's going to be a double kill. There. Both are going to be going down. The red inhibitor went down again. That's an ace. Now we're going to have to see if Thresh can clear this before they take any more turrets on the Hanagiga side. And this is just not the trade that Hanagiga was looking for. 20 to 8 for Senko Ranch. And now an 11,000, 11 and a half even thousand gold bleed. Ari was sitting at 1 and 7. One of the turrets did go down. 8 to 2 on turrets. And I think, simply put, this is going to be a GG from Hananiga. Not much they can do about this. German's going to miss one axe there. He's going to pick up the other, though, so... And it looks like Lulu is going to be split pushing the top lane. They're going to rotate onto Baron, get a lot of vision on there from Psycho Ranch. Get a pink ward right in front of there. Looks like Alawi's going to try to fight this, try to clear this wave. Are they going to be able to pick up anything out of it? Looks like the Spooky Ghost is going to come out. Trade onto Zack. Zack's going to move away. Which is going to allow Lulu to just trade back in. Looks like they've got three men rotating towards the top lane. As that's the third dragon that comes out for Senko Ranch quite easily. No, there's been... Very, very little contest on any of these three dragons for them. Uh, the pink ward is going to be cleared though, so Vision is going to go over to Hananiga on the Baron pit. But Thresh, Calvin Thresh is going to be caught out for his efforts. It's going to be 3v1, but he's going to be able to flash out of there. Gragas is going to follow. He's going to get himself killed with the... Oh, and there's not going to be anything there for him to hook into. So good effort there from Thresh, but not much that he could do past that. So at that point, it's going to be 5v4, and nothing can, that Hananiken can really do to stop this Baron from taking place. And that's going to be game after the Baron, I, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think there's any way Hananiken can hold off this, but they are going to go for a last-ditch TP onto the, onto the Dragon, or onto the Baron. They're going to just cancel that real quick, because as they know that there's not much that can be done. Ooh, the ulti almost slayed the dragon for Hananiga off of Draven, but he did just barely mistime that one. Um, they're going to try to hold this top turret, but I don't think it can be done. Uh, at this point, I simply think that they're just going to push through the base. And Yasuo, 9-3-6. As I said in the pregame, Firestar 9-0-3, the best player on this team. 
the simple, simply put, he's the carry for this. We've got Trevor is going to rotate onto the support position. He's going to be picking up his Braum, uh, one that he's been trying to get out a lot. Uh, e is actually going to be playing the top lane at, as a Darius there. We're going to see Games, Dean, James uh, come out as a Lux to try to counter their Yasuo. Uh, he says he's going to keep it as a farm heavy game. Not much of a kill potential there, but it'll be interesting to see. Uh, we're going to see Anthony go the ADC on Kogma. Um, something that he's been trying to do with Kogma and uh, Braum lately. So that'll be interesting to see how that one works out. And then Cal is going to be playing a Master Yi hard carry. So lots and lots of farming for mid game in this game. So if Hyaniga can survive till uh, about 15 to 20 minutes, then I think they have a chance of picking up just one point out of this one. Um, but anything, as long as they can pick up one point rather than the losing two, uh, would be preferred. We're going to jump on over into game now and load on in. So let me switch over to my other one for you guys. But yes, lots of changes here. I don't know if they'll necessarily be beneficial or not, but but there we go. We're going to see what we can do here. Looks like the bug splat is going to come out for us again this time, but we're going to reconnect before we're even available to watch. So the Hananiga is going to be on the... And I'm watching the wrong game. That is... That is not optimal. So what we want to do is we want to spectate the right game. That might help. We are going to see Hananiga on the blue side this time. As long as we double check this, it should work. There it is. And so DC Rules is going to pick up the Poppy. Uh, Nautilus is going to be the jungle. Callista as the AD carry. Morgana as the sport again. And Yasuo yet again in the mid lane. We do see five skins on either side. So much like the teams they're trying to emulate here in the program and we're waiting for we hear the music and there it is they have loaded into game and it looks like what are we going to do here what are we going to see we are going to see on the blue side looks like there are both teams are going to group up here we're going to see three looks like they're going to invade on the blue side on the blue buff for uh, Hananiga is going to do so, but it looks like they may meet up, up in this motherfucker. at, they may meet up as the Cinco Ranch is going to get into that river bush. They're All not going right, to see vision on there, but they are going to, but they are going to come back here. Um, the red buff is going to be the priority here as five men are sitting on their red buff here. Yi is going to want to be careful here. He's going to get caught. And yet he didn't even notice real quick. But the Nautilus hook is going to come out. He's going to miss. Looks like he's going to be able to get back to tower. The Morgana Q is going to come back. Looks like an even trade. Kog'Maw may just back off. He's going to ward up there. Make sure that it doesn't happen again. Brom's going to look to leash for the red buff here. For E. Or actually, it looks like they're going to do Krugs. And it looks like Darius is going to farm as Poppy walks back to lane here. Standard start now that they've seen each other. Um, Yi took a little more aggro than he'd have liked on that initial clear. 
think Darius is going to get a lot of, a little bit of poke onto them. Gonna see in the bot lane a little bit of poke on from either team, though it is gonna get healed up from the I just don't check my item, my relic, the relic shield from Prof. We're gonna see a bit of a trade back from Game Steen here. Shields come out for, Ooh, but the Q is gonna hit for. Ignite is going to come out, but the shield is going to help him out. Looks like he will be able to survive. He won't back, though. Um, unknown reasons why. Uh, but the turret shot is going to help out. He's going to try to poke out that one bar. Doesn't want to back quite yet. The tornado is up, so it might be in his best interest to kind of back off here. Kogma is going to get quite a bit of damage out onto that Callista force the use of a sh of a pot, but it's going to be just a trade there. Looks like the uh, uh, pit is going to come out from Morgana, and the Nautilus is going to gank here. He's going to slow himself down. Oh, Braum with a very, very nice hold on for the... Ooh, he'll get himself killed for his efforts, but he's going to save his ADC for his troubles. So, a wise play for Braum there, diving in front of the Morgana Q. Top lane is pushing in Hylinga's favor, uh, and bot lane is going to stay relatively even. It is 1-0 for Senko Ranch right now. Oh, but they are going to keep that, and the flash is going to come out. Black Shield will come out though as well, so it doesn't look like much will happen. Darius is going to pull him back in. He's going to force the Flash from Poppy. Mid lane looks relatively even right now after that initial loss of trades. Looks like James Dean has traded. Games Dean has traded himself back in here. Darius is a lot more healthy there than Poppy. And uh, despite the one kill in, uh, or in Senko Ranch's favor, looks like they've actually gone relatively even in CS to where now that is only a 1,000 or 100 gold lead. I'm gonna rearrange my team members there. It looks like under the turret, E is going to let himself get killed, but he's going to pick up a kill for his efforts. I don't think that's quite what he wanted to do, but he does pick up the kill. Thought he could heal a bit more. You're going to ward that river bush there for how many? Both teams move back to amongst their lanes. Top lane is going to use TP down, so. Both lanes are going to see, and uh, Hanamik is going to see that top lane was, for a single ranch, was using TP, so he's going to answer. Uh, not to put himself at a, or neither team at a TP disadvantage. He is going to be up on a, by a level, so he's got his 6, he can dunk, but Nautilus is going to rotate up. Darius has no vision of it. He's gonna rotate down to get that vision. Mid lane, we're gonna see a fight there, but it is gonna be Lux trading out of it. And we remain 2 1, but Nautilus is gonna come in. We're going to see a dunk come out from Darius, and he is going to get the kill on the one. Is Nautilus going to be able to, to kill him here? We are going to see the Yasuo come out for that, to make sure that he can do so. And the bleed from Darius was just barely not enough to get Nautilus here. 
They're gonna try to dive. And they are gonna get the Nautilus. The ulti is gonna come out from Yi to try to escape here. But Yasuo is gonna be able to pick him up regardless. Not much he could do there. So it's gonna remain 4-3. A lot more even of a game earlier for Hananiga than we saw last one. Lux is going to be fighting Yasuo up here in the top lane. No mana though, so Yasuo is going to back. Uh, no mana call was for Lux, obviously, since Yasuo does not use mana. They're going to see the back, but Poppy is going to rotate back over there, so they're not going to want to do much here. Yasuo seems to want to stay here. They think they can pick up the kill. Darius knows something is fishy with Poppy not being there. Yasuo's going back. No, he'll cancel that back once again. And we see the Poppy trying the ult to knock him into the wall. She won't be able to do so. And so that's going to be a wasted amount of time there for Yasuo. It's just gonna take that slow walk down to mid lane. And it looks like Darius is gonna win the trade here. He's gonna try to pick up that pink ward. He does not have his devour quite yet. Nautilus is coming in, but here comes Yasuo, and that's gonna be the kill for Yasuo. Or for actually, it's gonna go to Nautilus. It's my bad. As Callista tries to rotate back down, but she's gonna get caught side there. Slowed, but spell immune as well. It's gonna get a couple yep, autos taken. Lane, we're gonna see a bit of a trade. James is gonna lose that trade just a bit. It looks like Yasuo may be moving down towards bot lane. He is going to do so. Looks like they're gonna be dead anyway. No, it looks like they will be able to protect. At least, no, it's gonna be the Kogma going down off of that. Oh, and just barely with one turret shot left, and the heal does keep Callista alive. Oh, it's going to be a wasted ulti there from Lux. Just barely dodges the tornado. is going to heal herself off with some life skill. But they're going to set it up for a three-man gank on this Lux. I think she knows of this. Oh no, she walks right into it. I'm gonna be able to flash away, but the shield is gonna come back out, but the Q is gonna keep her alive. As they try to re-engage, but they won't be able to catch it out, so it looks like they may just back away from it. Fight on tower here up at top lane. Right? He was going to drive under tower there for it, but it looked, he thought better of that. Oh, and here comes the ulti. Is he going to bleed her out there? No, the heal is going to keep him her from going down. But it looks like she's gonna, he's going to try to trade onto the tower. Will he be able to... He doesn't see the recall is so close. Take, he'll take that turret down to about two-thirds of its original health. He'll look to back and even out this as the TB does come out from Poppy. Nautilus wants to rotate onto the dragon. Doesn't look like he... looks like he'll ward that but move away as his team decides to collapse onto it. They do see two bot side, but they don't know where everybody else is, so... They'll continue to back off from it. TP is going to come up towards top lane, so that it looks like they're going to push on that mid tower. 
Uh, got a minion wave and some free aggro onto it. So James is going to clear that with a Lux ulti. That wave. It looks like the Nautilus is going to come down bot lane. They do see him with the ward though, so they're going to attempt to jump out of there. Oh no, and the double ulti for Morgana, and that's going to come out as a Callista double kill. Looks like they're going to rotate both the bot lane and jungler onto Dragon and try to get some aggro onto this turret. to be a much more even game at the beginning is now starting to is now sitting at 8-3 for Senko Ranch though they are going to try to get a they are going to get the flash out on this Yasuo will the Q come out from the ghosts are going to come out and it is going to be a kill there for IMC he's going to take on this Yasuo this time but red team is going to get the dragon out of that But they're gonna rotate around. They're gonna find another kill in their jungle there, and it looks like IMC is gonna steal a red buff. And it looks like they're gonna try to find a kill bot lane, and they are gonna do so. Are they gonna be able to get the Nautilus? No, they're gonna try to back off of that one. So it's gonna now be eight six Hanania. Not too shabby. Not too uneven either. So. Looks like Red Team did take, did lose their top lane turret there. So that's actually going to put, for the first time in this series, a gold lead towards Hananiga this game. And it looks like they're going to try to take a second one. They're going to siege down this bot lane turret as well. It's going to be actually even. It's going to be a game that Hananiga has the lead in this time. It's now a 23.7 to 20,000 gold lead for Hananiga. Calvin currently has a stack in that Devour. He's got 11 stacks on that Devour, now 12. He's gonna try to rotate, looks like he'll try to find his red buff. After clearing some minions out on the mid lane. Looks like Nautilus is gonna look for the Rift Herald. See what he can get here for Yasuo. They're gonna take the Rift Scuttler as well to help that out. Lux sees that there might be someone missing. Sees that this may be the worst, not a good opportunity. We're gonna back out of here, but it is gonna be a shield onto herself. And the Brahm is gonna come out to try to keep that from going. And it's gonna be a good trade there. Gonna keep it from being too uneven there. Looks like Darius is gonna have. Oh, his full combo is gonna come out. Is he gonna be able to dunk on this? He's gonna back away. He's gonna pull it back in. Oh, there goes the dunk and the kill. So now it's eight seven. For uh, for the team from Texas. It's like a wrench, I apologize. They're gonna try to 2v1 this Darius, and will it end up mattering? He's gonna heal himself back out. It looks like. Yeah, it looks like he'll be able to. Uh, he'll go down on this one. Good effort, but they are gonna try to. Or they are gonna get the shutdown gold as well. Now 4-3 and 1 on the Darius. Oh, two of her lots a much better game than the last game for her. But we are going to see that it's 4-1 for the Callista and 3-1 for the... for the Yasuo. And a lot of burst there coming out from Kog'Maw. He's got his Rage Blade and he's, his Berserker's Griefs and he's working on that one. Um, looks like he is up to... Let's see, he's up to 17 stacks. He's got his Rage Blade. And this comp may actually scale enough that they may be able to hold this one out. It's currently 27.4 to 23.7 on the gold. The Lux ulti is going to clear the wave. And it looks like Brahm's going to be stuck holding this tower 2v1 uh, with the Poppy and the Callista. He's going to get his Q out onto the Poppy. Um, going to attempt to clear the wave. Looks like they did find themselves a Yi with the Morgana Q. 
slow is going to come out onto the ADC like they'd wish, but they are going to lose this tower down bot lane. So they're going to make it even on the bot lane turrets. Three men down there. And the dragon did go over to... Uh, over to Senko Ranch, I did, I did fail to mention. I need you guys to see that everybody is bot side for uh, Senko Ranch, but Senko Ranch is going to pick up another kill out of that one on the bot lane, beating this... Oh, and he's going to pick up a nasty kill there with his Q. Looks like they're going to pick up a second double for Yi. Is this going to be a triple for Yi? It is a triple for Yi. Is he going to pick up the quad? We're going to follow this one. He is going to miss that, but he is going to come back and James Dean is going to pick up the last one. Are they going to get the ace here? No, it looks like they're going to let the Morgana escape, but they're going to ooh, just barely dodge that Q. And it looks like they'll try to push the mid lane out here to even this out. Now, 5, 2, and 1 for Calvin on the Yi. And Anthony on the Kog'Maw, building that attack speed, is now sitting mid lane, or is trying to push this bot lane, split push it. They are going to pick up the tower in the mid lane. Uh, Anthony's going to attempt to get this top, or this bot tier, too. He's going to see that the Morgana is going to come out with her spooky ghosts. He's going to back, but he is going to miss that, so he's going to roll out the red carpet there. And now the turrets are sitting 3-1 for Hananiga, and Hananiga is actually up in kills now, 11-10. to Cal is going to find himself caught, so he's going to back away here. Sitting now with 26 stacks, he's going to try to pick up two off of this rift scuttler. He's going to do so. Now he looks like he's got his Gramp and his Wolves to do to, fi to finish off that Devour. And then he'll probably back as he has 25,000 enough to get his next item. Or at least a major portion of it. Hananiga's distribution of resources is really a lot better than it was last game this game. It's... They're doing very well. Farming has been pretty even. And it looks like they're going to see that... Darius is going to see now that they've got some wards out there that there are four men collapsing on him. He's going to attempt to back out of it, but he's going to see there's nowhere to go. With that, he's just going to try to queue his way through the heal. Not going to be much he can do here. Just attempting to escape, and there was not much he could do. So that's going to be a... Free kill and tower, top lane. Um, looks like, though, the Hananiga team is going to try to take that off of them with taking a dragon to even it out here. It's going to be a very quick take from Hananiga. That's their first dragon of the series. Lux is going to ping out, or actually, it's the Spooky Ghost pinging out that there is a Morgana, and she's going to be able to pick up the big combo pick up the kill. Uh, doesn't look like they can defend this turret, though they are going to try to rotate onto and do so. There are four men up on this turret, and it's just going to go down. Not much they can do. Uh, but he is going to be split pushing up on this. Oh no, they're going to catch out a James Dean. It's going to be a, a Darius, though, is going to try to pick up the kill onto the SUO. He's going to dunk him. He is going to get the kill. Oh, he misses on his Callista, but the knockup is going to come out from Braum. The stun, they're going to pick up the Callista. Oh, he's going to miss on his Q, but it is Braum with the nice Q to, there to pick up the kill. 15 12 the kills for Hananiga. 4 to 1. 4 to 3 the towers. 1 to 1 on dragons. Baron is alive. Uh, though it doesn't look like there's any vision for either team, so I don't think that's much of a possibility there right now. 39,000 to 34,000 could the gold lead for Hananiga. 20 minutes into the game. Looks like Gucci is going to pick up this red buff on the Kog'Ma. Very little health lost on that. I apologize, I am getting over a cold, so I have been a little bit sniffly this game, so looks like Red Team is going to ping out the Baron. They want the early Baron to try to get that power play. 
but they see that there's two, three men mid lane that they cannot fight that Baron, and they're going to have to, they're going to be split up. They're going to try to rotate back into their team, but they notice they are spell immune, but wow, the combo, they're going to force a flash out of the Morgana, just so that she doesn't die of the Lux ulti. They're going to split up the team. There's two men mid lane, or three men mid lane, two men top. The spooky ghosts are going to come out, but the Morgana Q is going to be the disengage that they need there for Senko Ranch. Six thousand gold lead for Hananiga. Looks like they've got four men mid lane, one man top, split pushing. And it looks like they're gonna that Senko Ranch is gonna send all five mid lane to defend. Yasuo is kind of considering going top lane, but he's gonna see that he has to defend this. There's none. Yeah, now they're gonna rotate onto the top lane. Yasuo only. With that, they're gonna notice that it's gonna have they're gonna see that and Cal is going to take the turret, and it looks like he might get the kill out of it. He does get the kill. He has the red smite. It's going to be a kill onto the Yasuo. After the kill, now there's one man down for, uh, for, looks like just there's the one man down for Sanko Ranch. But James is going to get a big ulti there. It's going to be a two-man kill. Darius is going to get one. He's now got two with the double, with two dunks. That's five, or that's... Four for none. Morgana's the only one left. It looks like they'll take an inhibitor target here. Will they get the inhibitor? Yes, it looks like they will. 19-12 the kills for Hananiga. 47.2 to uh, 36.3 the gold lead. Th seven turrets to three. It looks like they're just gonna try to end here. Will they be able to do so? Darius is tanky enough. It looks like they might. Yi's gonna keep pushing. They might get one turret at least here. They are going to get the one. Looks like they may back off after that. Yes, Yasuo is up, so they will back off. Braum is going to come back. They're going to have to see the Braum ulti shield come out. It is going to be a slow. They're going to disengage here. Kog'Maw takes one with the with the Yi. Yi's going to get caught for his efforts. And Kog'Maw's go, just going to have to try to escape. So, so... Cinco Ranch tries to at least get something out of this. They're gonna get stuck. They're gonna try to get it, but the flash is gonna come out from, yeah, uh, from Kogma. He's gonna dodge this tornado. Looks like two inhibitors for none is gonna be the, uh, we're gonna be the trade off here. But it looks like Cinco Ranch will take this opportunity with everyone back to take Baron. Looks like though we may see a Darius come in and attempt to do something here, at least force them off of it, he's going to immediately die, but he's going to save enough time for his Kog'Maw to come in to pick up at least two, there's, Baron does go over to the red side, but it is going to be, it's... they're going to pick up two off of it, um, so it's going to be a trade even there, it's going to be a two for two on that, and the red side does pick up Baron off of it, uh, it looks like Kale's going to run bot lane and clear this tower, uh, clear this wave so that the tower does not die. 2115 the kills, 51.1 to 41.7 the gold lead, 9 towers to 3. One dragon apiece, looks like dragon's up in 30 seconds and Hananiga does see that and is going to rotate on down, looks to take the blue buff and then rotate on to the dragon. Pick up that second one for the tower burn and there's not much left with that one tower remaining for them, to, or for two towers remaining. Apologize. Possibly three? Three. There's the one bot. No, bot lane is gone, so just two. I apologize, I need to learn how to count to 11. Uh, but yes, they are going to pick up that dragon so that they can burn down those last two towers. The words of Ashton Kutcher on that 70 show, they will have that. Or the word is burn, and uh, that will be what they will get from it. They will take it with just the Darius, the Braum, and the Kog'Maw. Looks like that's their second one, so they do have the turret burn. Baron is still out for Morgana, and let's check who has it. Morgana has it, as well as Yasuo and Poppy. This is a much better game we're seeing here from Hananiga this time. They're going to lay out the red carpet. 
Kog'Maw is going to do so. I'm gonna try to siege down this turret. I'm gonna first prioritize on to the Yasuo. He's gonna go down. He's not gonna go down quite yet. But Kog'Maw is going to take out two. Here comes the Callista ulti. They are gonna pick up no more off of that. They're just gonna have to back off a bit. And it's gonna be a four for one. Now, uh, or sorry, not a four for one. I apologize. It's going to be a three for three. Let's go back, and once this is disengaged, I don't believe this is quite yet, as top lane turret, or as the other Nexus turret does go down. We'll go back and reanalyze re that one in just a second, but it looks like they are going to push through for that last turret and inhibitor. The spooky ghosts are going to come out. No Nautilus and Morgana be enough to hold this turret, or to hold this Nexus. No, it does not look like it. Darius is going to get a couple of autos onto it. Now there's the... Now there's the Braum, and the Kog'Maw, the heal comes out, it's going to be game, GG, right there. Let's go back and look, real quick. How did that fight go down? This is the game winning fight for you. GG, Hanigo wins, but let's watch this fight go down. So we're going to look at this here. So right before this, wow, jump back 15 seconds. I'm just gonna back up a little bit more. Here we go. So the engage. Wanna watch here. So Kogma's still dead at this point. This is after. This is the dragon take. So we know from here what goes on. Looks like we're gonna see. I apologize, I'm not a professional at this, so um, I have a lot better people on this than me at the LCS level. Okay, here we go. So it looks like the Yi's going to come in. Both summoners are already down for Kog'Maw, but his ulti is going to come out. There you go. So you're going to watch. The flash comes out from Yi, and now he's going to be knocked up here. Yeah, there's the team fight for you. We may even go back and watch this one last time in slow mo just because it. Oh. So the Callista would have capitalized on that, but Lux did get a nice Q back onto her. And then the minions push up here, so. Let's go back and watch that at half speed. So that we can see all the. So we're going to see the red carpet laid out. And oh, it's the True Shot Barrage that's going to actually proc the Yasuo uh, shield. Well, not the True Shot Barrage, but the uh, the ulti from Kogma that's actually going to set up this entire fight right here. And now you see Yasuo tries with his ulti. He is going to get taken down though for that. And you're going to see Kogma takes down Poppy down here with the help of Kale. Kale's gonna die for his efforts there. But we're gonna see Kogma just trade right back onto. right there. We're gonna see Kogma trade back onto the Morgana to force her off. And here's that play. The Ren is gonna kill, but then the Q was already out, and it's gonna be the kill that uh, Hananiga needed there. And they're just gonna be able to turn that back around and fight for the win there. So overall, there you go. This is going to see the end of the game. Right there. Nexus will just go down. You're going to see just that there's too many minions here for them to hold on to, so... He is going to be able to... He's going to get ulted, but he's going to heal himself just enough that he's going to be able to come up and get the Nexus with some very nice uh, healing and some autos going on there. He does crit the Nexus there with that full swing auto. And Braum's going to heal him enough to keep the shield up so that they can force off the Nautilus and then they are just going to be able to, with the Kog'Maw, take that Nexus with an auto at a time. The heal's going to come out in case they get queued. 
but it won't matter because Kog'Maw's going to keep himself at a reasonable distance. And that's the Nexus going down. GG. So, Hanani can just pick up one point out of that. Looks like Hanani can pick up the one point off of the second victory. Um, they don't pick up that first point. And, uh...